Sorry, I've been told I have to read this at the start of the episode. <clears throat> Warning, what follows is a wild tale of pheromones, gyrating dance moves, provocative slow motion footage, and sweet, sweet nectar. You've been warned. Honey is produced by a variety of insects, including the bumblebee and the honey wasp. But practically all of the world production today comes from the honeybee, which exists on every single continent except Antarctica. Now, before we go any further, can you even imagine how cute bumblebee honey must be? I mean, just take a look at the bumblebee. It's ridiculous. Honeybees are a vital part of our world and our very existence. And that's not just because the global honey market is valued at north of $8 billion. Honeybees are pollinators, which means, well, I mean, it basically means that it allows male and female plants to have sex. There, I said it. <gasps> they do this by transferring pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. And that allows many plants to grow seeds and fruits. For some plants, pollination is absolutely critical, meaning that without bees in the mix, seed and fruit production can plummet by as much as 90%. Some examples here are kiwis, melons, and squashes. And for loads more plants, a life without bees can tank production by over 40%. And that's still massive. This includes almonds, avocados, raspberries, blueberries, okra, and the list goes on and on. The USDA has estimated that every one in three bites we eat is pollinated by bees. So what I'm basically saying is there'd be no other episodes of this show without bees. Yeah, they're that important. And they give us sweet, sweet honey. Now here's how that magic happens. The honeybee gathers nectar by inserting its tongue into the nectary of the flower and then depositing it in its honey sac. Nectary, honey sac, couldn't ask for better terms. So here's a crazy thing. The sac secretes an enzyme called invertase that starts the transformation of nectar to honey before the bee even gets back to the hive. Bees are like tiny little honey factories. And that enzyme is really important because it converts sucrose to fructose and glucose. Sucrose, which is white granulated sugar, is a disaccharide, which means that it has two molecules bonded together. In the case of sucrose, those two molecules are glucose and fructose. Fructose is sweeter than sucrose and glucose is a little less sweet. And it all adds up to honey overall being a little bit sweeter than granulated sugar. Beyond that, those smaller sugars mean big things when it comes to our favorite reactions, and those are the Maillard reactions. They give us a beautiful sear on steak or the lovely crust on a loaf of bread. In the Maillard reactions, heat breaks down proteins into their building block amino acids, and it breaks down carbohydrates and big sugars into small sugars, like our friends fructose and glucose. So if you start with those small sugars, you can get faster and better Maillard browning. This means that honey can be used for a big boost in the browning department. But we can do even better than that. Meaty tasting anchovies are packed with amino acids. Honey is packed with small sugars. Do you see where I'm going with this? Together, they're like a one-two browning punch. And that's why you can combine one and a half teaspoons of honey, one teaspoon of anchovy paste, and a tablespoon of oil, and then brush it on, say, oh, I don't know, these pork chops for super fast and flavorful browning. Just look at these grilled chops. But let's get back to the bees. Now, after all that bee work and all that enzyme work and some evaporation work, we've gone from nectar, which on average is about 80% water, to a super saturated solution that is just 18% water. And that gives us lusciously thick, infinitely drizzleable, sweet, acidic honey. Let's get a few more shots of honey drizzling and looking great. Nice. Now, supermarket honey can seem like a pretty uniform commodity, but the truth is honey varies a lot based on what the bees have been pollinating. Folks in the honey biz talk about monofloral and polyfloral honeys. Monofloral honeys are the result of bees pollinating primarily one type of flower. Think orange blossom honey, clover honey, and buckwheat honey. By setting up hives in the fields of a specific type of flower at the right time of year, you can get a majority of that kind of nectar in the honey. But because bees generally forage in a one mile radius around the hive, you'll definitely get other nectars in the mix. Polyfloral honeys, like wildflower honey, contain a mix of nectar sources. So is one better than the other? It's all about taste and preference. And the only way to find out is to buy lots of honey and taste, taste, taste. Did you ever wonder how honeybees end up finding those flowers in the first place? Well, it turns out that bees are great communicators and great dancers. You didn't see that one coming, huh? Bees secrete pheromones and perform a dance that's called the waggle dance to tell all the other bees in the hive where the good flowers are. And here is what that dance looks like. They do a waggle down the center and then loop around with both a left and a right turn forming something of a figure eight. The direction of the waggle tells the bees that the flowers are located at a specific angle, like say 90 degrees from the sun. If that weren't enough, the length of time that they do the waggle tells the bees how far the flowers are from the hive. What? 
A one second waggle is said to correlate roughly with one kilometer. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? I mean, what am I even doing here? Bees should be hosting the show. Bees. Now, if you stick around through the credits, you might just see my own interpretive waggle dance. But before we get to any dancing, we have to head to the kitchen and make one recipe that is super new and super trendy, and one that is steeped in tradition. They both contain honey. Okay, first up, TikTok and honey. Now somehow this trend started on TikTok of basically freezing honey and then, well, just eating it straight. Some folks put honey in a squeeze bottle, so I've done that. And then I also thought some tiny honeybee ice cube trays would be really cute. I was right, they're really cute. Let's check out some frozen honey. So here's the squeeze. It's pretty wild looking. The honey has a taffy-like texture to it. So why doesn't it freeze solid? Because honey is a super saturated solution, its freezing point is lower. So honey would need to get much colder than standard freezer temps in order to solidify. We see the same phenomenon with sorbet. Fruit juice alone in the freezer would turn into ice cubes, but the addition of sugar keeps it soft and scoopable. All right, done with the explanation, let's taste some frozen honey. Mm, it has an awesome taffy-like texture, but it melts super quickly, and then you basically just have a mouthful of really, really sweet honey. TikTok, you got me. You know, there's an old saying here in Massachusetts that says, fool me once, shame, shame on shame on you. Fool me, like the point is you can't get fooled again. Okay, now for something far, far more delicious. The Neapolitan classic dessert known as struffoli. It consists of fried dough balls bathed in honey and decorated with multicolored nonpareils and sometimes confectioner sugar, nuts, and dried or candied fruit. It's perfect for Easter, Christmas, but basically any time you want something fun, beautiful, and totally snackable. First, we whip up a dough of flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, eggs, melted butter, and vanilla. The perfect lightly sweetened cookie dough. Then we portion it into tiny, adorable dough balls. We'll go into the fryer in batches until they emerge gorgeously golden brown. And now, time for our star ingredient. One cup of luscious honey. I'm using a lovely wildflower honey. Then we heat the honey and Mmm, does that smell good? We add our struffoli and cook to slightly reduce the honey and help it penetrate the cookies. Then we stir in the nonpareils and almonds and a little orange peel. And now for the really fun part, forming it into a beautiful shape. We'll pop a pint glass down in the center of the serving platter and pile the struffoli around it. After letting it cool slightly, we'll remove the glass and beautiful. Let's hit it with some more sprinkles and invite some friends to enjoy. This dessert is all about sweet, aromatic, slightly sticky honey with lots of great texture. Now, if you grew up eating this, you already know. But if you didn't, now you know. This is without a doubt how to eat honey. No, 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 no. Not like that. Definitely not like that. This is how to eat honey. Thanks for watching. Now, all of the credit for this video goes to the bees. Thank you, bees. If you'd like to find out how you can help keep healthy bee populations around the world, there's a link below to the Bee Conservancy. Of course, there's also a link down there to Annie's wonderful struffoli recipe. You have to try it if you've never made it. And now, without further ado, the waggle dance.